Hello, in this video we're going to look at consumer theory uh, by trying to bring together some several key ideas. So first, there's a lot of things going on here uh, that brings confusion. Uh, there's indirect utility functions, there's Roy's identity, Shepard's lemma, expenditure functions, the consumer consumer's dual problem, the consumer's primal problem, compensated demand functions, Hicksian demand, Marshallian demand, uh, and so on. So I want to try to bring this all together. Uh, one problem with textbooks is a lot of times this material is spread over a couple chapters, and then in writing the textbooks, the authors will you know, send you back to another chapter or 50 pages ago to see a result, and uh, it can be quite confusing. So I'm going to try to bring this all together in one video. So here's a, a key slide here. The consumer's primal problem, what is that? Well, it's maximizing utility, maybe a Cobb-Douglas utility function, subject to a budget constraint. From this, we can get the indirect utility function, utility as a function of just prices and income. Using something called Roy's identity, we can recover the Marshallian or ordinary demand functions from the indirect utility function. And here's a formula for doing that. Again, uh, we'll go through this in the video to talk about the, the Roy's identity and recovering these Marshallian demands. So here's a co consumer's primal problem and what it leads to. The opposite of the primal problem, or kind of the reverse, is a consumer's dual problem. This time we're trying to minimize expenditures subject to a targeted or given level of utility. So the primal constraint is the objective function here. Uh, uh, whereas the objective function over here now becomes a constraint. So again, it's somewhat confusing, but we're minimizing expenditures subject to a given level of utility, a target level of utility. From the minimization uh, problem here, uh, we get the expenditure function. And from the expenditure function, we can use something, uh, a result from Shepard's Lemma, to get the compensated or Hicksian demand functions for X. I'm just showing it for X here, but we can do this for good, uh, good Y on both sides here. Uh, one also important thing to keep in mind is that the inverse of the expenditure function is the indirect utility function. The inverse of the indirect utility function is the expenditure function. So let's get started with the consumer's primal problem. So here's a standard uh, consumer's primal, primal problem. We're going to maximize utility. Utility equals X times Y, subject to a budget constraint. I'm going to do this in the, by solving uh, with a Lagrangian. So the objective function is uh, X times Y and plus lambda times the constraint. We're going to take three partial derivatives of the Lagrangian one with respect to good x, one with respect to good y, and then finally with respect to lamb lambda. We're going to set all partial derivatives equal to zero. So in step one and step two, uh, we got these partial derivatives set equal to zero. And what I like to do is solve for lambda. So solving this expression for lambda, we get this. In step two, solving this expression for lambda, we get this. That moves us to step four. Uh, where I'll set lambda equal to lambda. And now what we're going to do with this expression is we're going to solve it for y, and then we're going to solve it for x. So solving it for y, we get something like this. That will eventually be plugged into this budget constraint up here, where we see a y, we'll be plugging this uh, term into it. And then likewise, taking this expression and solving for x, and once again, then we're going to plug this expression back into the constraint. So that's what we'll do in step five. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to plug x equals y times the price of y divided by the price of x into the constraint. Here's the constraint once again. And now making that substitution where I see an x, I plug in this mess. Solving that for y... We get this, y equals income divided by 2 times the price of good y. Incidentally, this is the Marshallian demand for good y. Um, 
not done yet. We have uh, from the last screen, we found y equals x times the price of x divided by the price of good y. Plugging that into the constraint where we see y, we're going to plug in this mess. Solving for x, we get x equals income divided by 2 times the price of good x. This again, incidentally, is the Marshallian demand. So the next step, taking y and x over here, we're going to plug these results into the utility function. That will get us an indirect utility function. And I'm just going to call the indirect utility function. I'm going to use v here to represent that. So plugging these terms into the utility function and simplifying, uh, we have the indirect utility function. And as I mentioned in the other slide, if the inverse of this, if you were to solve this for m, you would have the expenditure function. Okay, you might want to replace m with e uh, to represent the expenditure function. But uh, again, solving this indirect utility function for m, you have the expenditure function. We'll do that. Uh, we'll 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 worry about that a little bit later. Um, all right, uh, Roy's identity. Roy's identity tells us we can get the Marshallian demands by taking the ratio of two partial derivatives two partial derivatives of the indirect utility function. So taking the uh, partial derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to the price of good x, and then dividing that by the partial derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to income. Don't forget there is needs to be a minus in front of these uh, uh, ratio of partial derivatives. So doing that, we get this mess here. And this will nicely simplify down to the ordinary or Marshallian demands. As you might notice here, we already found that in this first step in the maximization problem. But Roy's identity is a, just another way to get these Marshallian demands if you were just given the indirect utility function. And we do a similar thing for good y. The only thing different here is that uh, in the numerator, we got the partial derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to the price of good y. All right. The consumer's dual. Here we are going to minimize this, uh, the expenditures subject to a targeted or desired level of utility. Setting up the Lagrangian for that, we've got the price of good x times good x plus the price of good y times y. I see my subscript didn't carry over here, but uh, this is the price of good y times units of good y. And then we add in the constraint. We're going to take three partial derivatives uh, like we did in the primal problem, setting all of those equal to zero. And so in the first two steps, <clears throat> we do that. Uh, as before, I, I simplify by solving for lambda. We're going to set lambda equal to lambda. And as before, we're going to solve for y and x. So I do that here. We're going to take these results, and we are going to separately put them into the, uh, the uh, objective function. Okay. So doing that, uh, plugging y into e here and simplifying, we get x equals e divided by 2 times the price of good x. Doing the same thing with the x result, uh, plugging x equals y times the price of good y divided by the price of x into uh, x over here. And simplifying, we get this result here. Now I'm going to take both of those results from step 5, and I'm going to plug them into the, uh, the constraint, the desired level or targeted level of utility. So where we have x and y, I'm going to be plugging in these values here. We're going to solve for e, and that will be our expenditure function. So e squared equals this, taking a square root of both sides simplifies down to something like this. Now that we have the expenditure function, we can take some partial derivatives of it to get us the compensated or Hicksian demands. So taking the partial derivative of this e expression with respect to the price of good x, 
we have the compensated demand for good X, and then taking the partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to the price of good Y, we have the compensated demand for good Y. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.